get started on that. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Lightly Self-Awakened One. Buddhang saratnang gachami, dhammang saratnang gachami, sanghang saratnang gachami. I go to the Buddha for refuge. I go to the Dhamma for refuge. I go to the Sangha for refuge. So at this time, if you like, um, we are going to take 10 minutes and practice Vipassana, practice Vipassana meditation and um, get comfy wherever you are sitting on your chair in your home or office and, uh, and get into a good meditative position, meditating position. If you can, sit with your legs crossed if possible. Uh, with one leg in front of the other, neither leg on top. Uh, if this position is uncomfortable, you can sit any way you like that will allow you to uh, observe the rise and fall of your abdomen. And, uh, and sit with one hand on top of the other if you can, palms up on your lap with your back straight. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Oh, wonderful. Um, uh, would you like for me to go over the first part again? I'll do that just, just in case. Uh, sit with your legs crossed. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, with your back straight, it, um, if you can, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just as long as you can observe the abdomen and uh, close your eyes since your focus will be on uh, the rise and fall of the abdomen, uh, having your eyes closed will be a distraction for you. And, um, and look and pay attention to your abdomen. When we breathe in, our, our lungs are filled with air and our abdomen rises or expands. And so we say rising. And then when we let go of the breath, uh, it falls, so we say falling, or it contracts, so we just say falling. We, we pay attention to it and, and observe it and note it and really have a clear awareness of it. And just say rising, falling, and uh, until something comes up you know, uh, jumps up into your mind uh, and then gently allow your mind to go back to the rise and fall. Uh, don't force it. Allow, allow it to happen naturally. Just allow those things to go away naturally. Uh, and when we are experiencing feelings, just say feeling. And when we're thinking, just say thinking. Uh, when we feel angry, uh, we just say in our mind, angry or pain. Uh, and um, pick a word or a phrase that describes the experience accurately and use that word to acknowledge the experience for what it is. And uh, try not to allow the rising of a judgment of the object as good or bad or me or mine. Um, so these words like feeling and thinking and pain and angry and these are mantras and mantras is a word or phrase that we use to focus our mind on an object uh, like rising and falling. We use the mantra to focus our attention to ordinary reality as a clear recognition of our experience as it is and uh, free from projection and judgment. And by using a mantra, we will be able to understand the object 
of our experience clearly and and that way we don't get attached to them or have aversions towards them and uh, so at this time uh, let's take 10 minutes and practice vipassana meditation and uh, and observe the rise and fall of your abdomen uh, the rise rising and falling is like a, a default object that you can always go back to anytime um, so we just say rising when we breathe in and then falling when we breathe out and then um, if something else comes up if you start to think about feelings like or you know if you start to have feelings about something or if you think about something to say feeling or or thinking um, you know all these things just uh, um, just and then just allow them to to go away naturally and then come back to reality with with uh, observing what's happening right now with your abdomen rising and falling so so at this time let's take 10 minutes and practice that and I hope everyone had a wonderful and fruitful meditation and uh, hello those of you that just got here Cassie and uh, Gaia um, so let's Let's go ahead and take 10 minutes and I'll ring the bell. And then again, when 10 minutes is up, have a fruitful meditation, everyone.
Wonderful. I hope everyone had a really fruitful uh, meditation. And now uh, we can move on to Karnya Metta Sutta. And um, yesterday we were going to do the long version of the backstory to the to the sutta, and we didn't get to. So today we'll go ahead and do what we were going to do yesterday. And so the story goes, the back the backstory to the Karaniya uh, goes that there were 500 monks who learn meditation from the Buddha, and they go off to practice meditation in the forest. And they found this place in the forest, and there were people there, and, you know, that asked the monks to stay. You know, they built them a place in the forest, and and so they decided for for Wasa, which is the rain rains retreat, rain season, uh, that they would uh, stay. They would stay in the forest because during the rains, the rain season, which is from July to October, uh, during these months it would rain, and there would be too many insects and small things, small living beings that could get trampled and smashed um, and you know as a result of people uh, walking around and monks traveling around everywhere so the monks decided that to stay there in the forest and also because the Buddha knew that if the monks stayed uh, in that forest and meditated they would ultimately all become arhats through their development of meditation. So, um, you know, they would, they would find enlightenment. And in, in this forest, there were a lot of earth dwelling devas or angels, um, you know, heavenly beings, uh, living there in the forest, uh, because the forest was, you know, these beautiful, peaceful, quiet, uh, place and Davis like living there and because people during that time were very afraid of ghosts and things and, and they always thought that that forest had ghosts in them and so they don't ever go there they don't ever go in, into the forest so it was a quiet place for the Davis to live and as this as was told in this in the tradition in the Buddhist tradition initially. So these devas, uh, when they saw these monks coming, they saw that they they were very respectable uh, because of how, uh, you know, pure their morality was and, and how they were behaving. So they saw the monks as worthy of respect. Oh, sure. No, no worries. Um, thank you for coming, and Namaste. Have a beautiful day. And uh, so the monks, or the deva, saw the monks to be very respectable, and uh, and that they had pure morality, and um, and saw, you know, how they were behaving, and uh, so they came down from the trees because they were living up there in the trees and the monks were at the bottom of the trees so they they came down and they were 
um, uh, they were like, uh, well, maybe the monks, you know, will, they, they'll just stay for one night and then maybe they'll leave tomorrow and we can go back up to the trees. And so the monks practice their meditation until night falls and then they went to sleep, they rested and then woke up in the morning and went for alms uh, in the village. They went into the village for alms and came back into the forest. And the devas saw them coming back. They were kind of irritated, uh, but they said, well, maybe they'll stay just, you know, for one night and then they'll leave tomorrow. And, and it went on for like 15 days. The monks just kept leaving and then coming back, leaving, coming back for like 15 days. And uh, so the devas were very irritated and said, we have to get rid of these monks. They were, you know, they were getting very, very angry at this point. And, um, you know, they didn't like being at the bottom, living on the bottom of the trees. Uh, but because the monks were there, uh, they felt they had to be at, you know, be at the, the bottom of, of the forest and not up in the trees. Um, um, you couldn't, uh, the belief was that you couldn't be higher than a fully ordained monk. So, so anyway, in order for them to get rid of the monks, the devas would appear to them as ghosts and headless things and headless bodies and corpses and you know things like that and and try to scare the monk the monks away um and you know making all kinds of creepy noises uh while they were meditating and totally disturb the monks and uh so they couldn't meditate and so after a couple of days of this they decided they needed to leave the forest because it, it wasn't a practical place to, to meditate. So they agreed to head back to Jetawana where the Buddha was. And uh, the Buddha was staying at, in Jetawana at this time. So they told the Buddha, uh, they said, Bhante, we can't stay there. There are ghosts there. And, and uh, we are not able to practice. We're not able to meditate. Uh, but the Buddha knew that these monks has to practice in order to gain insight in that forest. And because this was their karma and, uh, and they, they had to face it. And this was the only place for them. So the Buddha said, uh, you have to go back. This is my advice to you. Uh, um, trust me. And so the monks were like, how can we fight? And this type of enemy, how we can't meditate, and they're bothering us. And and so the Buddha said, well, last time, um, when you went in the forest, you did not have a weapon. Uh, and this time, I'm going to give you a weapon to combat with. And so the monks uh, said, okay, please, you know, what is the weapon? Give us, please tell us. And so this was when the Buddha taught them the Karaniya Metta Sutta. And, uh, and the Buddha said, now before you go in the forest, start chanting the Sutta and then chant all the way as you walk into the forest and keep chanting. And this Sutta is also a way of protecting yourselves um, and others and also as a means to produce a wholesome mind state. And he went on to say, if a person develops his, this mindful state, this state of, you know, loving friendliness uh, and have no anger and have right views and things like that, uh, they will not have to be re reborn again uh, in the womb. And so this was the sutta that the Buddha gave them as a protection from the devas and also for developing a uh, meta mind state. So then the monks uh, memorized the sutta 
and they walked back to the forest. Uh, and when they got near the forest, they started chanting the sutta. And uh, so when the day was, here's this, they, they heard this, uh, they came down and, and they wanted to hear more of these teachings. And they were very affected and very impressed by, uh, you know, and, and by the sutta and became very friendly and started, um, started taking care of the monks and they took their bowls, washed their feet and things like that. So from then on, they, they really cared for these monks and, and, you know, didn't turn themselves into ghosts or anything after that. And so as a result, the monks were uh, able to develop their practice and able to meditate and ultimately gain arhanship. And so all 500 bhikkhus uh, became arhans. And here is the sutta. And this is another version. Uh, I haven't done this one. And this, this is translated from Pali by uh, Piyadasi Tara. Uh, and here is the Karaniya Metta Sutta. He who is skilled in well-being, in working out his own well-being, uh, and who wishes to attain that state of calm uh, or nirvana, uh, should act thus. He should be dexterous, upright, exceedingly upright, obedient, gentle, and humble, contented, easily supported, with but few responsibilities of simple livelihood, contro uh, controlled in the senses, prudent, courteous, and not hanger after associations with families. Let him not perform the slightest wrong for which wise men may, rebu may rebuke uh, or may rebuke him, let him think, may all beings be happy and safe, may they have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, free, feeble or strong, or the seeker and the, the attained, long stout or of medium size, short, small, large, those seen or those unseen, those dwelling far or near, those who are born, as well as those yet to be born, may all beings have happy minds. Let him not deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. In anger or ill will, let him not wish another ill. Just as a mother would protect her only child with her life, even so, let one cultivate a boundless loving or a boundless love towards all beings. Let him radiate boundless love towards the entire world, above, below, and across, unhindered, without ill will, without enmity. Standing, walking, sitting, or reclining, as long as he is awake, let him develop this mindfulness. This is this, they say, is noble living here, not falling into, erode, into wrong views, being virtuous, endowed with insight, lust in the senses discarded, verily never again will he return to conceive in the womb. So that is the sutta, the Karaniya Metta Sutta. And the Buddha uh, taught also that there are 11 benefits to metta in a sutta called Metta Nisangsa Sutta, uh, which means discourse on advantages of loving kindness. And here is the sutta. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living near Sawati at Jetavana at Amitabhintika Monastery. Uh, then he addressed the monks, saying, Monks, venerable sir, said the monks by way of reply. The Blessed One then spoke as follows. Monks, 11 advantages are to be expected from the release, uh, deliverance of heart by familiarizing oneself with thoughts of loving kindness, metta, 
by the cultivation of loving kindness, by constantly increasing these thoughts, by regarding loving kindness as a vehicle of expression, and also as something to be treasured, by living in conformity with these thoughts, by putting these ideas into practice, and by establishing them. What are the eleven? He sleeps in comfort, he awakes in comfort, he sees no evil dreams, he is dear to human beings, he is dear to non-human beings, devas or gods protect him, fire, poison and sword cannot touch him, his mind can concentrate quickly, his countenance is serene, he dies without being confused in the mind, if he fails to attain our friendship in the highest sanctity, here and now, he will be reborn in the Brahma world. These eleven advantages, monks, are to be expected from the release of heart by familiarizing oneself with thoughts of loving kindness, by cultivation of loving, loving kindness, by constantly increasing these thoughts, by regarding loving kindness as a vehicle of expression and also as something to be treasured, by living in conformity with these thoughts, by putting these ideas into practice and by establishing them. So said the Blessed One. Those monks rejoice at the words of the Blessed One. And so we begin our practice with immeasurable metta, immeasurable release of mind. And as with all forms of meditation, uh, make sure you are comfortable where you are sitting and remember to be kind to your body as well as the mind and uh and just take some deep breaths and get some oxygen into your blood and uh as you begin to become mindful and aware of your body and mind begin to think about all living beings and their plight of impermanence and dukkha all beings are born grow sick grow old and die this is Dhamma. It's the true nature of reality. All beings are connected by this truth. All beings wish to be well, happy, and peaceful. Begin within your own mind to develop feelings of loving friendliness, of empathy and kindness. First for yourself because you're also subject to impermanence and dukkha. And then radiate metta throughout your entire body-mind construct. And your metta practice can be wordless, visual, or you may use the words of metta. It's not the words or the vision that matters, but the feelings and mental state of abiding in metta. Uh, and since this is a guided meditation, I will be using the words of metta. And we always begin with ourselves. So, let us begin. May I be calm and peaceful. May I be calm and peaceful. May I be well, happy, and peaceful. May I be well, happy, and peaceful. May I be free from suffering. May I be free from suffering. Or let's do that one over again. May I be free from anger. May I be free from anger.
May I be free from hatred. May I be free from hatred. May I be free from jealousy. May I be free from jealousy. May I be free from suffering. <laughs> May I be free from suffering. May I live long and joyfully. May I live long and joyfully. Now we radiate metta to the six directions. The Buddha taught that radiation of metta, immeasurable release of mind, is like a, pea, a beam of pure light that shoots out from you and travels to all beings. So let us now send our metta, our pure light, out to all beings. Imagine that beam shooting out through the planet and to all beings uh, throughout the universe in each directions. May all beings in my front direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my front direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my back direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my back direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my right direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my right direction be well, happy, and peaceful.
May all beings in my left direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my left direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my above direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my above direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my below direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in my below direction be well, happy and peaceful. Now as we continue to abide in metta, imagine magnificent waves of metta radiating from you in all directions, spreading and becoming ever larger. And spread your metta out to envelop all beings in your building, wherever you are, in your home or office, wherever that may be. May all beings in this building be well happy, and peaceful. May all beings in this building be well, happy, and peaceful. Continue to release your metta and radiate it out in all directions to encompass your state or region. May all beings in this state or region be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in this state or region be well, happy, and peaceful. Now continue to abide in metta and radiate your metta 
further to envelop all beings in your country. May all beings in this country be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in this country be well, happy, and peaceful. Now picture the earth in your mind and spread your meta to envelop all of our home planet in loving friendliness. May all beings on this planet in any state of existence from the smallest to the largest be well happy, and peaceful. May all beings on this planet, in any state of existence, from the smallest to the largest, be well, happy, and peaceful. Now, as we continue to abide in Meta and envelop the planet, Radiate your meta out into the universe to envelop the entirety of our home galaxy, the Milky Way, and all of its billions of stars and planets. May all beings in the Milky Way, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in the Milky Way, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful. Now, as we continue to abide in Metta, radiate our Metta further to encompass the entirety of the known universe with its billions and billions of galaxies. May all beings in this universe, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in this universe, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful.
Now spread your meta out into the metaverse to encompass all the universes and planes of existence in existence. May all beings in existence, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful. May all beings in existence, in any state of existence, be well, happy, and peaceful. In this world, hate never yet dispels hate. Only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and inexhaustible. That was from the Dhammapada, verse number five, something that that Jay Jayanta used to uh, add all the time in his talks. It's a really good one. So thank you everyone for abiding in Meta today. And uh, I hope that was beneficial for everybody. And um, thank you all for, for coming and uh, sharing this wonderful meditation. And if you like to continue to abide in metta and keep meditating and sending metta, please feel free and um, and um, uh, next Tuesday uh, we'll have a Vipassana practice next Tuesday. So thank you everyone and uh, namaste and have a beautiful rest of the night. And uh, hope we see you next time. Sukihan to everyone. May your practice flourish. <laughs>